if you are from New Jersey, you're probably you're probably feeling like the housing market and the government, they're they're walking up to you. They're looking you square in the eyes and kicking you right in the dick. Am I right? That's what it feels like to try to be a landlord in New Jersey. It's just like, hey, man, walking down the street. Bang! 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 Dick kick! Dick kick! Dick kick! So many dick kicks! That's what it feels like to be an investor in New Jersey. The taxation's out of control. The property values, man, they're skyrocketing. It's nuts. But guess what, folks? Much like an ice pack or a frozen bag of peas, I'm here to solve your dick kick problems. Let's go. This is your show. This is the show where I work for you directly, taking your needs. I'm going through the MLS and I'm trying to find the best possible deal for you guys. Put down 25%. That's the perfect way to buy this. That's why real estate investing is the greatest industry in the world. Welcome to the show, folks. I am James Wise, and I am here for you, right? My client today, Andrew. Andrew is from New Jersey, and his nuts, well, they're sore, right? They are sore because you can't live life as an investor in Jersey without some sore testes, man. If it's not the cost of housing, it's those crooked politicians eroding your rights as a property investor, right? But don't worry, folks. Don't worry. Much like a frozen bag of peas will ease your pain, your boy Jay Wise is here to ease your pain, right? You don't have to invest in Jersey just because you live in Jersey. That'd be crazy, right? We can commute, right? Not physically. You don't need to physically. I mean, dude, I know the traffic. Woo, when you're shit trying to go. Oh, anyway, you don't have to do all that. My team is on the ground for you, on the ground for you in markets where it makes sense, markets where you have rights, markets where the government is incentivizing you to invest your money, not attacking you, right? And that's what we're doing today for Andrew. We're helping Andrew get started in Airbnb investing. Love me some Airbnb investing, right? I got my start in rentals uh, with the lower income stuff, the Section 8 stuff. And, and to be honest with you, that's where I make the majority of my money. So we do both. Uh, but what I like about Airbnb investing is it allows us to really diversify real estate portfolios and really get some uh, diversified income, right? So that's just one tool in the tool belt that you as an investor should have, right? So what we're going to do now for Andrew, we are going to go over the numbers on an awesome short-term rental property investment. Every dollar going in, every dollar going out. And guess what? Andrew, since you're from Jersey, you're probably not too familiar with this market. I'm also going to go over everything you know, need to know about the market so you have the same type of education, knowledge, and uh, information, right? Information is a tool. Utilize it. Most important tool, honestly. I'm going to make sure you have all the information that a local would have so you can get all of that and make an informed investment decision. Let's uh, jump into all that right after a quick break. Hey, Steve. What are you doing? Oh, nothing. Just saving money on my rental property insurance. Oh, my, Steve. Take me now. Holton Wise. Real estate investing made easy. Wow, I'm so glad I clicked that link below. Welcome back, folks. This is what we're doing, folks. We're pulling up the number, pulling up the pictures, pulling up the money you could or could not make, going over the whole thing, seeing what makes sense, right? Now, just like any business, if you're going to be an Airbnb host, you got to get into the right investment, right? Now, this one, I like this one quite a bit, uh, but it does have some drawbacks, some things I don't like about it, right? The first thing I do like is I like the building. I think the building is super cool. Honestly, most of the time, right, when we're doing Airbnb, we're taking properties and utilizing them for something other than like their best use or their most normal use. Honestly, if you think about it, right? The most normal use of a house is typically a house. A family's going to live there and that's just it, right? But this one is actually, I feel like this was like, built for airbnb or like verbo or, or you know any of the other ones it's like built for short-term rentals right it's like not in a neighborhood it's like an old uh 
it's like an old commercial building built in the 50s, right? And then somebody converted it to a house is essentially what it looks like, right? And and you're not in a neighborhood at all, right? You're you're in like I guess what I should say is you're not like in like really like what you would normally consider a residential neighborhood, right? Like you're in a little commercial spot here. Like yes, you got all the houses down the street, right? Like you go down this way, it's all the street, right? But right here you're like right here on the corner. And then next to you, you have like a coffee shop and then like, you know, some little boutique like commercial space. Right. And that's like what's cool about this neighborhood. That's why it works. Right. So like it doesn't look like a normal house. It actually wasn't originally built as a house. And it's not like you're in like a cul-de-sac uh, where kids are just riding around uh, in the middle of the cul-de-sac on their bicycles. No, you're like in like a city, an urban area, like a nice trendy spot to do shopping. Right. As a matter of fact, it's one of the hottest uh, like commercial type districts in Cleveland, right? It's in the neighborhood called Tremont, right? This isn't where a lot of people think, uh, you know, husband, wife, 2.5 kids, dog, white pick fence, right? That's not this, right? This is uh, younger people, a lot of hipsters, right? You hear that term, a lot of hipsters uh, in this type of area going to enjoy the nightlife, the shopping, the thing of that nature, right? So it's like almost perfect for short-term rentals, right? Like it's not, it's, it's, it's far from like being like uh, your typical uh, like cul-de-sac neighborhood as possible, right? So uh, I feel like the short-term rentals on this is going to work out good, which, by the way, the address is 2358 West 11th, Cleveland 44113. If anybody out there wants to Google it uh, and, and do more look looking on the Google Earth there, right? So continuing with the pictures. Outside of the fact that I like it, I think it's cool when people are on vacation, they want to be right there, right? They don't need to get a car to go do stuff, right? That's like big when you're on vacation. Interior looks cool, man. It's hip. It's new. It's trendy. Like, we'll just need to uh, furnish it, right? Obviously, this is all the stuff from the person who currently lives there, right? It is currently uh, utilized as a single-family residence of somebody who, uh, you know, just lives there, right? It's not currently a short-term rental. So all the furniture you see does not stay. That is their stuff. But, uh, you know, about 25K, we should be able to get this thing furnished, ready to rock and roll. You got a little rooftop deck. Again, perfect uh, for those people. Uh, who are going to be using this on, on a short-term basis, right? As far as what the listing agent had to say, we'll go ahead and check that out. Rare opportunity to own this home in a prime location. Urban living in the heart of Tremont, Lincoln Park, and Civilian's Coffee Shop at your doorstep. Freestanding townhouse offers maintenance-free living with no maintenance fee, which is big, right? If you're going to do short-term rentals, your enemy is going to be HOAs, right? Homeowners associations, right? You know, the Karens driving around the golf carts yelling at you because you painted your mailbox a certain color. Uh, that's never good if you're trying to invest in short-term rentals. Almost every HOA I've dealt with, there's been a few. That there, There's an exception to this. Like I've done, I've worked with, I've had HOAs where they don't have an issue with short-term uh, tenancy, but a lot of them do. I would say the vast majority of them uh, are going to have bylaws that prohibit short-term leasing of your property. Some even go as far as to prohibit any type of leasing. And then, of course, the super radical ones are where you get the Karens driving the golf cart yelling at you about your mailbox color choice. Oh, did you pick taupe? You pick taupe? We're not doing taupe, okay? We're doing blue. I don't even know what color taupe is. Anyway, uh, sleek, sophisticated finishes and upgrades include hardwood floors throughout both levels. Custom designed kitchen featuring solid cherry cabinetry, quartz countertops, GE profile exterior, vented range hood, KitchenAid, digital stovetop and wall oven, fri uh, <laughs> fridge and air gallery, refrigerator, blah, 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 blah. Okay, they're just talking about the stuff. Y'all are going to have to just Google this. I don't feel like reading all this. Jeez, where's the stuff where we talked about the upgrades? Let me get through that. All right, poured concrete, integrate sink and counter, skylights in the bedroom and in the open floor plan slash living dining area, offer amazing natural light throughout the space, private outdoor treetop deck off, geez, so many words. Here we go. New high efficiency casement windows 2021. That's where I was trying to get. That's big, right? Especially because this is in Cleveland, right? We got the lead-based paint uh, laws now, the lead-based paint inspections, just because it's short-term rental don't mean you're exempt from that. That's big, right? Two biggest places that you have to deal with lead-based paint uh, issues is going to be on your windows if they're old and original. 
this is not okay you got new windows 2021 and they'll be on the exterior of your house if it's not like vinyl sided but this one's brick so you really shouldn't have to deal with that because this house is built in the 50s or building was built in the 50s so anything before 78 is going to require every two years uh, those lead inspections but since you got the new windows and it's brick probably not going to be a big deal for you right new roof 2017 those kind of roofs they last like 50 60 70 years uh that was probably the first time they replaced the roof right so built in 56 they replaced it in 2017 that's around 70 or so years right new deck 2021 new furnace and central air 2017 h2o tank in 2015 that's all good right furnaces last about 30 years cost about three grand hot water tanks they last about 15 years they cost about 1200 right now so you're halfway through that Exterior painted, new garage door and entry doors, 2016. Attached secure parking and extra wide garage with built-in storage cabinet. This home checks all the boxes for design, functionality, and lifestyle, right? So moral of the story is I think it's perfect for a short-term rental. I like everything about it. Uh, the one thing I don't like is the price. I think they overpriced it. Like, it's a super hip, trendy neighborhood, but I don't, like see a lot of people like gravitating toward this at the price of 385 right because i mean if you're starting to get up into the 385 400 450 500 thousand dollar price range uh in the trendy areas of the city of cleveland you could just buy new construction and then you'll get a tax abatement right like i mean dude on some of these new construction properties when you factor in the 15 year tax abatement it's like the government giving you a free hundred fifty thousand dollars this one does not qualify for that so i think the price needs to be much lower right you don't need to be up in that 400 or so range so like if this was brand new and it looked like this i think you know we'd be looking at like well over 400k and it'd probably sell immediately because it's a little older i think they priced it too high 385 i don't dig it at 385 i dig it at 340 though i think 340 is going to be what you need to take this thing down so 340 would be your purchase price your furnishings would run you about 25k so that's an all-in investment of 365 as far as the rent uh, if we rented it every single day at the nightly rent of 275, which is what I believe will be your average nightly rent, you'd make approximately 8,500 a month, right? That'd be 102 G's a year. But folks, you're batshit crazy if you think you're renting a short-term rental every single day. That makes no sense. Historically, we're looking at about 60, 62 percent occupancy. So after you factor in all that vacancy, along with cleaning, maintenance, the utilities, property management, because you want to do this totally passive, right? If you're trying to do this totally passive, trying to have my team handle everything for you, you don't want to be the person who's got to be like, oh, duh, you lost a Netflix remote? Oh, okay. Did you check under the, did you check under the couch? Not there? All right. Uh, did you check under the love seat? No, it's not there. Oh, okay, well. Oh, you're going to give me a one-star review if I don't give you a new remote because you're trying to watch uh, the latest season of Narco. Oh, yeah. No, I, I get it. No, Narcos. Great show. Okay. Yeah, all right. All right. That, you know what? You don't want to do that, right? My team does that, okay? Let us talk to them about Scoot McNeary. Love Scoot McNeary, man. You guys ever seen that movie Monsters? It's like kind of like a unknown one, dude. That's what turned me. That guy's good. Then he was in Killing Them Softly. You know, he played a really good joke. Great show. Great show. Seen the guy play really good drug cop in Narcos, really good junkie in uh, blah, 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 Killing Them Softly, right, with Brad Pitt. What a handsome man. Anyway, moving on. After all that's said and done, true net operating income average should be about 2400 okay? So that 102000 y'all are salivating over it. That's crazy. That's fluff. That's pie in the sky. That ain't reality. But in reality, you make almost 30 k off of this investment. At a 365 k total investment, it's about an 8 cap. And then, of course, you want to finance. Financing is the number one reason you should all be investing in real estate, folks. Can't get 30-year loans to buy NFTs. Can't get 30-year loans to buy Bitcoin. Can't get 30-year loans to sell dream catchers on Etsy with your girlfriend, folks. But you can do it with real estate. So after you factor in your 85 k down payment, bank kicks in 243 and then you kick in another 25 for the furnishings, you're looking at approximately 15.5% return on your money. And earlier, as kind of like a negative on this, I mentioned the 15-year tax abatements. Even though it's like at that point, you're like, oh, I should pay less because I'm not going to get a tax abatement. But... 
And that tax abatement, even though it's not available on this property, makes this property more attractive. Why? Because what is the tax abatement for? The tax abatement is to get people to come in, get developers to come in, tear down old crappy houses, and build fancy new ones that are expensive. They want to tear down old $80,000, 100-year-old homes and build five, six, seven hundred thousand dollars four or five six seven hundred thousand dollar houses in its place right so you get more gentrification you get more appreciation so this property today probably worth a lot less than it's going to be in 20 years when you got the city you got the government giving out all this free money to other developers so i do think it's a home run but not at 385 340 is the price i believe we should offer let me know if you want me to write up that offer Thanks for watching. Subscribe to Holton Wise TV for more financial information, education, and entertainment.